Hi everyone, welcome to Inside USC, getting ready for move in 2023. We are so excited, excited to have you guys. My name is Nora Williams. I am the Assistant Director of Marketing and Communications for the University Housing. And I'm Drew Branham, Assistant Director of Occupancy Management. You guys, we are only 37 days out from move in. We cannot believe it, but we are so excited to welcome you guys to Carolina. Before we begin, we just wanted to make sure that you are aware if we do happen to um, fall away from Facebook Live, it is because of some torrential weather that we're currently experiencing in the area. We will get back on as soon as possible if we are able. All right, everyone, so let's get started. This year, we are welcoming the largest first year student class we have had at the University of South Carolina. So with that being said, we now have three official move in dates. Those dates are going to be Saturday, August 19th, Sunday, August 20th and Monday, August 21st. We also have an early arrival day for special groups like sorority recruitment, band and ROTC. That date is going to be Wednesday, August 16th. To access the move-in schedule, you can visit housing.sc.edu slash move-in. Please note that time slots for move-in are based on your student's assigned residence hall. More information about this can be found on your student's housing portal, including the day and time that your student will select their move-in time. Under the move-in section on the housing website, there is going to be, a, uh, there's going to be a, uh, another section called move-in schedule. So this is an example of what you'll see on that page. It will tell you by building which, which days that you're going to be able to select from for the sign up for a move-in day and time. Certain residence halls only have work one day, whereas like Campus Village has all three days of move-in. So just make sure you go ahead and check, with, check out that move-in schedule page to get an idea of when your move-in day will be. And be sure, Nora, not to select to set any plans until you've selected your actual move in day and time. Now we're able to see that we've already gone through our first two days of time slot selection. So Friday, tomorrow, Honors Residence Hall, Campus Village 2, Columbia Hall in Preston, you get to go next. If you have questions about when you're able to select your move in time, please visit your housing portal and click on the move in tab. So just to, just to touch on this a little bit, um, you, your students should have received this um, schedule via their email. So if you guys didn't, we have it here so you can take a picture of, but also they can reference that email that they received um, just in case um, you guys uh, don't have this screenshot here. All right, to talk a little bit about move in passes and everything, um, the one stop shop for move in. So in the housing portal, you'll be able to see um, your move-in pass. Um, you will not see that yet until you're, until you're cleared um, for move-in. But this here is an example of what the move-in pass will be. You're, you will need to print this move-in pass um, and have it in your windshield when you, when you come to move-in. So for move-in zones, you see the color there. It tells you your zone as well. As you get closer to campus, you will see everything referencing your zone and these colors that is listed on your pass. So just keep that in mind. Once you get into Columbia, just go ahead and turn off your GPS and follow the traffic patterns that will be listed in the housing por portal, as well as follow all the sign signage that, that you will see as you get closer. You'll see the zone colors as well as the zone numbers, which is vitally important to helping you navigate to get to your residence hall. So let's touch a little bit about what drop and go is and what is fast pass. So all residence halls will participate in drop and go. Drop and go is where you go through the traffic pattern, you, um, you drop off your items at a designated location, and then you go to park your vehicle. So all residence halls participate in that. The only difference between drop and go and fast pass is for dropping for drop and go for certain residence halls, you will go to your student will go to check in um, before they're able to um, go to their sorry before they're able to go to their room. So for certain residence halls that are not a part of fast pass and fast pass plus, you will your student will go in to check in for pass fast pass and fast pass plus. We will check you in via your vehicle. So you are sta you're staying in line, and while you're in line, we will come up to your vehicle and we'll go ahead and register and check you in and tell you how your student will need to get into their room. So for certain residence halls, you will receive a key. For other ones, we'll tell you your code or anything else that you need to get into your residence hall. 
So that's going to be really the only difference between drop and go and fast pass. So fast pass plus is also the same thing. The only difference is there will be carts that will like that will be located right outside the residence hall that you can go ahead and check in to make your process be a little bit more smoother. So that gives you an idea of what drop and go is fast pass and fast pass plus. If you have any questions about which residence halls are are participating in which, you can just go to our housing website under move in. So just a reminder that there's only one vehicle allowed through the traffic pattern at a time. So if you are bringing two vehicles, whether it's your student's vehicle or your own personal vehicle, just note that one of those vehicles will need to be parked in a surface lot or another area on campus while the first car goes through. Once that car goes through and participates in drop and go, they will go park that car. You will switch over the um, parking pass, put the parking pass in the new vehicle, and then come back through the traffic pattern. Also note that you can come through the traffic pattern as many times as you need to. Um, there is not a limit, but we do just ask that you, um, if you have to just continue to go through the traffic pattern, there's not a limit. Um, and then student parking. So if your student has a permit parking pass, they, it will be valid, but we do use some of the parking garages in other surface lots around campus. So for instance, in Bull Street Garage, we do use that garage for move-in. So if your student is designated to park there, they might have to move their vehicle and park in another space in the meantime until move-in is over. So just keep that in mind. If you have any questions regarding that, feel free to reach out to parking services. So you're probably asking yourself, what's next? What haven't I thought of that I still need to do? One of the biggest things is immunizations. If you're not cleared with immunizations, then you're not eligible to move in yet. So as Nora mentioned before, you have to have your clearance in order to get your move in pass. If you need help with your immunizations, definitely reach out to immunizations or visit my help space to learn what you're still missing. Another key piece is to make sure that you have property and liability insurance. This information is on our website, but we do require a $5,000 personal property insurance and $50,000 in liability. We highly recommend using GradGuard, and you can find more information about GradGuard on our website and on your housing portal. Additionally, don't forget to pay your bill. If you don't pay your bill, you could eventually get dropped from your classes. Make sure that your fees are paid in full by August 16th at 5 p.m. If you're mailing in a check, make sure that it arrives by August 4th. Roommates, this is huge. Please get to know your roommate before you get to campus. There's so much to learn about your roommate other than the questionnaire that they filled out um, to, when you signed up for housing. So just make sure you're reaching out to them, you're communicating with them, and if possible, please meet up with them so you, can, so you guys can build a relationship. That's vitally important. Also, you need to communicate about what you guys are bringing to campus. Um, just so you guys aren't bringing the same items. For instance, uh, we used this uh, example at orientation about two people coming with a 55 inch TV and then one parent having to walk out with that 55 inch TV. So just keep that in mind. Communicate about what you're bringing, especially like larger items that might take up more space as well as things like a micro fridge. There's only, we'll touch on micro fridges in a minute, but there's only one micro fridge per room. So that's a cost that you might wanna split with your roommate or if one roommate wants to take that cost on, they can as well. So some things that we also like to touch on as far as some things that you might wanna to get to know about your roommate are questions like, what are you gonna share? What does your day look like? As in, what does your class schedule look like? Are you gonna be getting up early? Do you like to study early in the morning? Do you stay up late? If so, do you agree to quiet hours? How do you feel about guests? How do you feel about overnight guests? So those are just some examples of some conversation starters that you guys can have um, because you will have to talk about this when you get here. Um, you'll have to talk about this when you get here. You will meet with your resident assistant and you will have to fill out a roommate agreement. So it's, go it's great to go ahead and have those conversations before you arrive to campus. Micro fridges are one of my favorite topics. Um, a micro fridge is not what they used to be. These micro fridges are a combined microwave and refrigerator with a built-in smoke detection device so that if you forget to put water in your mac and cheese cup, you don't set the fire alarm off for the whole building. You might ask yourself, how much are they? Well, it costs $248.39 per year to rent or $604.79 to purchase. 
Please keep in mind that apartment style residence halls are not eligible to purchase or rent a micro fridge. If you're in Bates House and McBride, you're in luck because your room automatically comes with a micro fridge unit in it. If you want to make sure that you get your purchase or rental done on time, make sure that you submit that order to our partner standards for living no later than August 5th. So long as you meet that deadline, your fridge will be waiting for you in your room when you arrive. Not only that, whenever it's time to move out at the end of the spring semester, you don't have to worry about anything other than cleaning out the fridge and they will come and pick it up for you. So it's one less thing that you have to move back and forth. And here's just a reminder is also we do not allow mini fridges anywhere in any of our residence halls. So just keep that in mind. A lot of you guys have been emailing saying you've already purchased a mini fridge or that you don't need to use a microwave. Well, unfortunately, a micro fridge is the only type of uh, refrigerator option that we allow on campus in our residence halls. So just please check out the um, housing website, type in micro fridges to learn about what they actually are. But if you are interested in purchasing your own, you can. Uh, people have said that they saw them on Facebook Marketplace, they saw them on Amazon. So feel free to buy them there as well. Um, just know that it must have that smoke detection device. We also learned that um, students are interested in bringing like a tabletop mini fridge or maybe like a beauty fridge. Those are also not allowed because those are considered mini fridges as well. All right, decor 101. So a lot of you guys have been asking about different things that you can and cannot hang up. Um, so just a, just a tip that push pins are only allowed for sheetrock and drywall, whereas command strips are only allowed for concrete. So you can find out what type of wall type you have by going to the housing website, selecting your residence hall, clicking on room and furniture dimensions, and under there you'll be able to see your wall type. Keep in mind that some residence halls do have both wall types, um, so just to keep that in mind. Um, another thing to touch on while we're on this topic is about removable wallpaper. A lot of people have been asking, can you use removable wallpaper? Technically, it is allowed, but just know that if you take it down at the end of the year and it rips off the paint in the wall on the wall, you will be charged accordingly. So we technically don't. We would say not. We don't. We suggest not bringing them. But if you just can't help it, um, feel free to still do it. But just know that if anything uh, damages the wall, you will be charged accordingly. So that's kind of concludes our presentation part, but we're, I know that you guys have a ton of questions, so feel free to populate them in our chat below. Um, and we're gonna cut to a commercial that talks about Gamecock Family Hub and why it's important for you families and parents to sign up for it. Welcome back everyone. So we're gonna start answering some questions. All right, Nora, so we've got a question here. Um, what if the roommate will not answer any messages from us? Can we get a refund on the fridge if we're only allowed to get one per room? Um, no, you're not going to be able to get a refund. Once you uh, make that, once you make that payment, um, you are good to, you are locked into that, you're locked into that, uh, you having that device, I mean, to you having that, but you're not going to be allowed to get out, you decide not to come to the university. All right, awesome. And um, if moving in earlier, will the fridge be there when I move in? Yes. So as long as you complete, um, the, complete the sign up by August 5th, the Micro fridge will be in your room when you get there, and that includes for those of you who are participating in sorority recruitment or marching band or ROTC who has that early move-in day of August 16th. All right, Nora, so I know that car toppers aren't allowed on cars, but can they hook trailers onto their cars for moving? Unfortunately not. So um, if your car cannot fit into one parking spot, spot without something sticking out, then you're not allowed to bring it because all that will do is just back up traffic for, student, for parents or whoever trying to pull in. They're going to have to pull around it, um, especially if you're like a garage. It, we just don't advise it. We don't allow it. You're not going to be able to get through the traffic pattern if you do have those trailer um, hitches on the back of them. Um, I see another question about the micro fridge colors. I've been getting this question a lot, but unfortunately they do only come in black. 
All right, Nora, we're getting a good bit of questions about what can be lofted, what does lofted really mean, what's a loft kit, how do I get that, <laughs> what buildings am I allowed to get that in? So will you tell us a little bit more about lofting, what that means in some of our buildings? Yes. All right, so I know this can be kind of confusing, but when you go to the housing website, you click on your residence hall, you click on that tab, that room and furniture dimensions, it's gonna tell you the max height that the bed can be. It will also tell you the lowest height that the bed can be. So I think we get the term loft, lofting a little bit confused, but yes, that means that the bed can be raised or the bed can be lowered. So when we talk about loft, we're talking about a lofting kit. So certain residence halls do allow lofting kits. Those, um, the residence halls that don't allow them, I'm gonna go over it, it's a long list, but I'm gonna um, say it because a lot of you guys have been asking. So lofting kits may, may be installed in all residence halls except Bates West, Capstone, Deschaswar, Harper Elliott, the Honors Residence Hall, McClintock, Patterson Residence Hall, Pickney Legree, Rutledge, Simmons, Wade Hampton, Campus Village, 650 Lincoln, 820 Henderson. So if your residence hall was not listed on that list, then you are good to bring a lofting kit. Um, so we do not have an affiliate that we do recommend. Um, we've been told at orientations that in the, fair, in the parent Facebook group that there have been some um, names or organizations, businesses listed that do provide lofting kits, but because we're not affiliated with anyone, we don't recommend anyone. And just know if you do purchase a lofting kit, that is you're responsible for setting it up. You're responsible if anything goes wrong or, or any damages is done with the lofting kit. Um, and you must know that if you do set up the lofting kit, the furniture that was already pre-existing in with the bed still has to stay in the room. So just keep that in mind. So otherwise, you should feel free to go to your student's residence hall and you should see the height of the bed um, as far as how high it can go and how low it can go. So. If you are interested in lofting your bed or reducing the height, just please bring a rubber mallet. Um, you can do it yourself. You also could request it through our maintenance team, although we don't suggest that. With 7,000 students moving in, um, that is just not a priority for us in the beginning. Um, it's something that we still can do for you guys throughout the semester, but just know there's so many other things that has to be done at the beginning of the semester that I, that, I, that, that typically isn't a priority. All right, Nora, we're starting to get some questions about string lights and fairy lights, <laughs> battery powered versus plug-in. What is and is not allowed? All right, so technically we haven't prohibited them yet, um, but they are on our not suggested bring list. And we say that because uh, we have had an instance where they've caught on fire. A lot of time the students leave them up, literally up and on all year long, and they're not, they're not meant for that. Um, so they do call, they, they can cause a fire. So in this instance, we are still permitting them, although we do suggest you guys not to bring them. The other thing that people have been asking a lot about is the strip LED lights that you can stick on the wall. Technically, those are allowed as well on the suggested not to bring list. But just know that if you do use that, those with the adhesive backing and you stick it on the wall, um, and then it comes to the end of the semester or the end of the year and you take it down and you leave the adhesive up, a lot of you uh, like to leave the adhesive up and think that's not taking down the paint, tearing down, tearing the paint off the wall. But when we have to take it down, it rips off the paint on the wall. So you will be charged as well as if you take the adhesive backing off and it rips the paint off the wall, you will be charged. So just know, be cautious when doing that. If you are going to use it, just know that it, that is a possibility. All right, Nora, do, do parents have to leave the residence hall by a certain time on move in day? Um, and if so, are they able to come back the next day, maybe finish up and say goodbyes at that point? Yes, this is a great question. We get this a lot. So on every single move in day, there is a, manda a mandatory floor meeting that your student has to attend. Typically, that's around six or seven o'clock. So we do advise you parents or supporters to, to leave at that time, just because that's a great time for them to meet their resident assistant, to meet the people on their floor, to learn about all the amazing events that we have within, within the first week of school, as well as throughout the duration of the school year. So we do ask that you guys leave around that time. But feel free to come back the next day. Just know two things. If you come back that next day and there's still a move-in day after that, um, when you come, you will not be able to go to the track.
the traffic pattern. You're going to need to park at a surface lot that you'll have in your email. Um, and you're going to need to shuttle over or walk over to your student's residence hall. You will not be permitted to come back through the traffic pattern. The other thing to note is you're not going to be able to easily assess us, be accessible to the residence hall. Your student is going to need to scan you in and, um, and walk you up to their room. So it's not just like you're not going to be able to freely walk through the residence hall. So just keep that in mind if you're going to come back that second day to say your goodbyes or to help set up still. But that is allowed. Feel free to stay as long as you like. All right, no, our, our shower, ro shower rods <laughs> already in place, um, and this is specifically a question someone's asking for green quad. Yes, there are shower rods in all of our residence halls, so that's not something you have to worry about. Um, the next question that I typically usually get after the shower rods is about the shower curtains and the curtain sizes. Um, for majority of our residence halls, the uh, shower curtains are standard size. Um, we are working on getting the sizes because a lot of you guys have been asking about the width. Um, and I know that it's been a very important question for you guys. And I'm going to be finding out the information shortly and updating the website. But for now, it is a standard shower curtain for the majority of the uh, residence halls, except Park Place in Campus Village. You're going to need an extra long shower curtain. Nora, there's, there's someone saying, um, what if your child has a medical condition that requires refrigeration for medicine? Can they have their own refrigerator? Awesome. Thank you for this question. So yes, they can. Um, so we do ask them to follow the procedure of going through our Student Disability Resource Center um, and registering with them. They will then notify us that your student needs an accommodation, and we will work with your student, and uh, we'll work with your student, and they will be allowed to have that uh, refrigerator. Um, so that's a special uh, exemption uh, for those students. All right. So we touched on shower curtain rods. <laughs> um, now, what about curtains for windows? Are they provided? Curtains? Curtain rods. Okay. Are they provided? Okay. So in every residence hall, blinds are provided. Um, there are not curtain rods per se. Um, and if you go to your specific residence halls, we have pictures on all of them and we also have 360 videos. Um, some of the 360 videos are a little outdated, but they're still good, they're still relevant. We are also updating the 360 videos. We've, we've done a good bit of them, uh, updated them, and we have more to come. So just keep a lookout for that to get an idea of the type of window that is in your residence hall. Um, some of them sit on the edge, so you might not be able to even be able to use a curtain rod. Um, so just keep that in mind. Some of them do sit back to where you could use a curtain rod, but just look at the pictures to get an idea or the 360 video. All right, Nora, I'm going to let you rest your voice for a second <laughs> and answer a question. Um, so what happens if both families were in a micro fridge and did not know because they have not communicated as of yet? That is a great question. Our partner, Standards for Living, who provides the micro fridges and delivers them, does a really good job of making sure that you don't purchase more than you need. So they will contact you and let you know if there's more than one um, and if there's more than one for the room, then they will refund you. So they will take care of that and do a lot of screening to make sure that they aren't delivering too many fridges. Um, because while in some residence halls, there's plenty of room for two fridges, um, it, it's a huge energy suck and also it takes up more space. So we wanna make sure that you have exactly what you need. Um, I see a question here that says, which uh, dorms got new furniture over the summer? So only South Quad got new uh, furniture in the sense of it matches all the other quad furnitures, uh, furniture. So all the other quads, um, they got the same matching furniture, as well as South Tower uh, received new desk. Um, and if you guys have any questions about what those desks look like, feel free to email me. But the desk no longer have a hutch. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at the pictures online. All right, Nora. So there's some questions about move in day. Um, and so if they have a later date to choose, um, will there be safe dates for picking their date? How will they know what dates are available for them? Um, and, you know, since every residence hall is choosing at a different time and day, um, are they still going to have the same number of options, even if they're on the last day of choosing? This is a great question. So we kind of touched on this in the, in the PowerPoint presentation, so feel free to go back and check as well. Um, but your student should have received an email with their date and time. Um, with that being said, there's also already online for everyone, despite your move-in day, your sign up for your move-in day and time. We already have the move-in schedule for each residence hall on the website. So just go to the move-in section, click move-in schedule, click your, um, your student's residence hall, and you'll be able to see the dates that uh, are, 
you'll be able to see the dates that you'll be able to choose in choose for move in. So like we mentioned earlier, like Campus Village is going to be for all three dates. Certain other residence halls only have one date or they have two dates. So just go ahead and view that and you can kind of get an idea of what to prepare for when it is your uh, time for your sign up. All right, Nora. So can a student select their move in date even if they aren't cleared for immunizations? They know that they can't get the pass, but can they at least select the day and time? Yes, so they are allowed to go ahead and select that date and time. Um, so the, the three things that were required before moving that we mentioned earlier are going to be the only thing that they won't be that will prevent them from actually moving in. But they can go ahead and select that move in date and time. All right, lots of good questions being asked here. Give me one second. I, I see them. one, Drew, okay. that says, do you want to touch on this? Can they use extension cords? So not extension cords, but surge protectors are what is recommended. Um, so that way, if, um, if you have um, something trip in your room, it's tripping that surge protector and not your whole room or hopefully not the whole floor. Um, you know, keep in mind, there's a lot of people in a lot of these buildings. And so you want to be mindful um, that what you're doing um, is not going to negatively impact the other people around you. Um, I saw a question about color guard and possibly marching band because I think they are on the same schedule. Yeah. Um, so you want to touch on what that is in August, that August 14th day and what that looks like for them? Yes. So if you are in band, August 14th, you're going to check in at the band hall um, and you will um, be able to drop and go. You'll be able to drop your stuff in your residence hall. You can't start staying in the residence halls until August 16th, as that is our first official move in date. Um, but at that point, you'll be able to begin living in your residence hall on August 16th. Um, I see a, a bunch of parents talking about uh, Campus Village and the walls. Um, and are there pictures as well? There are pictures on the website already that will show you pictures of the wardrobe and the entire room and the um, pictures of the pod style bathroom as well as the suite style bathroom. So feel free to go to your specific student's residence hall to look at those pictures. Um, the wall type for Campus Village is going to be drywall. So yes, you're not going to be able to use command strips. You're only going to be able to use um, those push pins. All right, North. so Campus Village 1, um, we have the pod style restrooms. Um, so because of that, they don't need a shower curtain, right? It's provided for them? It is provided for you guys, or for you all, sorry. Um, so that's going to be for Campus Village Building 1 in all traditional style residence halls. You don't need to provide a shower curtain or anything of that nature because multiple people share those spaces. So those bathrooms are cleaned daily and those are something that we provide. Um, yes, the big question, will Campus Village be completed by August 16th? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, it will. <laughs> <laughs> We've been getting this question a lot. We know you guys are eager, you're nervous. We have already passed the certificate of occupancy, which is huge if you guys know what that means. We are 100% sure we are going to be ready. Uh, Campus Village will be ready by the time of move-in, including early move-in. So you guys don't have any worries about that. All right, Nora, so buildings that have um, newer furniture, specifically the desk and the, the small cabinet that has a lock on it, like many of our buildings do, does that fit under the desk? Should it go next to it? What are the options for students with that type of furniture? Oh, so for instance, South Tower with the new desk that we just, um, w that we just got with them, they, that little side piece actually fits under the desk. Um, I will be uploading a photo. I'll probably try to do that by tomorrow so you guys can see what those new desks look like. But yeah, it'll fit right under the desk and you are able to bring a lock to lock that bottom area. Um, and some of you guys have already emailed and I've sent you the picture. So if you have any questions, just know that it is going to be coming to the website. The dimensions are already there. So don't, you don't have to email us to ask us the dimensions. They're there. There's nothing about a hutch under the dimensions. It's just the, um, just the desk area in that little, what they call like a side, side filing cabinet um, that will be listed, that is listed as well. All right, so there is a question on here about shipping items to campus before move-in. When can they start doing that? So you guys can start shipping starting August 1st. 
Um, but we do say that if you have any questions regarding moving, uh, sorry, regarding shipping packages, please contact Postal Services as they are going to be your point of contact for anything regarding shipping or picking up your items. Uh, we do have some basic knowledge such as when you can start shipping. We know that you can ship as many items if, as you would like, as well as you can ship as big of items as you would like, for instance, like a futon or anything of that nature. So we always suggest that if you don't want to fill your car up with a bunch of stuff, feel free to buy, sh buy and ship it to campus. Or you can always feel free to do probably sh you could um, do pickup in store for the different stores that are around campus if you want to um, order things closer to your move in day and time, because that's also another option. Nora, if I live in somewhere like Green Quad, South Quad, East Quad, am I able to get a micro fridge just for me to put in my personal bedroom? So unfortunately not. Those um, are considered apartment style residence halls and they already have a full size refrigerator in the space as well as a, as a full size kitchen. So we do not permit, we do not allow micro fridges in those residence halls um, just because you guys already have access to that full size refrigerator. All right. Um, let's see here. Lots of good questions coming in. I know you've got lots of questions about all the different types of tension rods and shower curtain rods and curtain rods. And we will do our best to answer those, um, after the show in order to give you the most correct answer as every single room is a little bit different, um, in, in each different residence hall. Um, Nora, we, we touched on this a little bit, but, um, Campus Village, if I am in building four, okay. um, I'm going on a different day than people in building three, two, and one. Is that going to impact the days that I can see when I go to select my move-in time slot? Or is it broken down by each one, two, three, and four building? Um, for Campus Village? Yes. I believe it's all three days for all four residence halls. Correct. Yes. So to tag on to that a little <laughs> bit, it's set uniquely for each residence hall. So each building is separate, one, two, three, and four. It's not all of Campus Village. It's each individual building. Um, I see a question about if a student can't park in Bull Street Garage, where can they park? So there might be limited parking. Um, there is still parking for students to park there. It just might not be limited or it might not be, everybody might not be able to park there, especially depending on your move-in day. Um, so with that being said, you guys can contact uh, parking services and they will already have a list of alternate lots that you guys can park in. But we also will have that in that move in email that we kind of mentioned earlier. Or if you guys went to orientation, we will send you a move in guide. We'll have some list of some alternative options for your for you and your students to park in when you come to campus. Um, so just know that those will be an option. Shuttles will be running from those locations to bring you back to campus. So it's not like you have to um, you're going to have to walk back. There will be shuttle options as well. So so don't get worried. Don't worry about that or your student when they get here. All right. So if I live in a traditional or sweet style hall that has community kitchens, um, are there pots and pans and stuff like that provided? Or is that something that I should bring a little bit um, for myself to use if I want to utilize that? Awesome. So yeah, this is a great question. For community style and I would even say apartment style um, kitchens, you're going to need to bring your own pots and pans. Um, I've heard that some universities allow you to rent pot and pans. Pots and pans, unfortunately, the University of South Carolina is not one of those institutions, at least not yet. Um, so you are going to need to bring your own pots and pans. Um, we've heard like paper towels, toilet paper, things of that nature, you, uh, you will need to bring your own paper towels, your own um, toilet paper, if you're staying in like an apartment style, suite style. Of course, if you're staying in those traditional style or pot style, those things um, like toilet paper will be provided as well as t um, paper towels. All right, Nora, so is there an ice maker in my freezer in South Quad, <laughs> Green Quad, any apartment style really? I actually don't know the answer I to that. I thought I would stump you with that one. The answer is no. Um, however, there are ice makers in most of our residence halls in community spaces. Um, and so if you're really big on ice like I am, get you some ice trays or find the nearest ice maker in your residence hall. Let's see what else we got on here. Nora, will there be rolling bins um, to help with the move-in process? Yes. 
Um, so we do have move-in carts that you guys will have to check out no matter which residence hall you're going to be in, even for those in Fast Pass and Fast Pass Plus. Um, you, it's basically a box on wheels, so just keep that in mind. <laughs> um, it's one box, so most of the time we tell you guys, please bring extra carts, please bring a dolly, please bring other things for you to carry your items into the residence hall. The box will not be able to fit everything. You're gonna have to make multiple trips with the box. So just make sure you're packing accordingly um, as far as bringing additional things for you to bring stuff into the residence hall. That's vitally important. Um, another thing to touch on while we're talking about packing is we see it every year. Those Ikea, those blue Ikea storage bags are huge. A lot of you guys come in with so many of them and they're awesome. They're sturdy, they're durable, they're easy for you to take the items out and then fold them, fold the bags down and then you just take it right home or you're able to just slide those under the bed. So we do recommend those. If you guys have already went to orientation or if you have yet to come to orientation, we have customized some Gamecock ones that, we, that are special edition just for orientation, just from housing. There's not, they're not something that you can purchase, but just keep it that in mind we are big advocates for those blue bags we've seen them uh, we heard the parents rave about them so just take a look at those um, and I believe that Amazon has some blue bags as well All right Nora um, so on the mail and postal services website it says you can't ship large items but does this apply for move-in um, that's a great question. From our knowledge that you were able to ship large items. So like I said, we are not postal services. So just make sure you follow up with them before you start ordering those big items um, as they're going to be the best resource for you about shipping items. All right, Nora, you've sparked a little bit of a toilet paper <laughs> debacle over here. So can you tell us um, what halls do you use toilet or what halls you need to bring your own toilet paper for um, and maybe some of the halls that it's provided for you because it's a shared restroom. Okay. Do you want to touch on the actually with specific residence halls? Yeah, I, I can do that. <laughs> so if you're living in Campus Village Building 1 only, not 2, 3, or 4 because those are suite style, but Campus Village Building 1, South Tower, McBride, and Bates House, those restrooms are going to be clean for you daily if not twice daily and those paper products are going to be provided for you as well so if you're in campus village building one bates house south tower or mcbride then you don't need to worry about those um, restroom supplies um, and those those will be cleaned for you so that's one less thing that you have to worry about um, some of you are asking very specific questions about um, a certain residence hall um, just make sure you are referencing the residence hall page, room and furniture dimensions, or the pictures, or even the 360 video, because a lot of those questions can be answered um, via visiting the website. Um, just because I, we might not have, know off the top of our heads which pieces of furniture has what. All right, Nora, um, what about water bottle refill stations? I mean... I know they're all over campus, but what about in the residence halls? They should be located in all, all residence halls should have a water, a refillable, a refillable water bottle station. Awesome. Let's see what else we got going on here. So I see parking is another one. After you drop off the items, where do you need to park? Um, like we mentioned before, you, we're going to have some suggested locations in the move-in email, but also you can um, contact Park and Services because they're going to have uh, the most up-to-date information about which lots are going to be available. All right, Nora, um, I've got a question specifically regarding move-in for a sorority student. Um, so they only got one email. Mm -hmm. Does that e Do they need to get a second email in order to register for that early move-in date, or will they register at the same time as everybody else who's out there looking for a time slot yes so you received an email it was the sign up um, for your move-in day and time uh, we we've, we've mentioned that earlier and we have a if you go back on the slide presentation it'll show you for each building so no matter if you're a part of sorority recruitment rotc marching band or any of the special groups that come in earlier you still have to sign up for at least a time your date is going to be august 16th but you still have to go into the portal to select a time um, a lot of you guys, I've talked to a lot of you at orientation, typically that since you already know your date, you're flexible with the, with the time. So just feel free to go in and just go ahead and select the time when, uh, when it is your, when it is time for your residence hall to go through. All right. All right, Nora, can, can we talk a little bit more about bikes and biking around campus and how to best secure your bike, um, either outside your hall or inside if there's a bike storage room? 
Okay, perfect. So um, off the top of my head, I know that Patterson and Campus Village um, does have indoor bike storage um, and as well as like Park Place. Um, so just keep that in mind. Those are the three that I know right now. If you guys have any questions, if, if yours does, most of them don't. So I think those are the only three that I can think of that have the, that have the indoor. There are plenty of bike racks around every residence hall for your students to park there as well. Um, another question that I've been getting a lot is about the electric scooters. Um, we do allow them on campus, but they're not allowed in any of our residence halls. That includes the indoor bike storages as well. All right. Did that answer that question? Yeah, I think that's good. Um, one last thing about that is to make sure that you get a good lock um, and USCPD would love for you to register that bike so that if theft unfortunately does occur and they're able to recover it, they know who it belongs to. Um, I see somebody has dropped something about fees, housing fees um, or academic fees, but since you, you guys are brought up fees, if you go to our housing website, um, we have updated the rates and fees page for this current year. I know a lot of you guys were waiting on that. Um, and tomorrow is a, they do release the billing for everybody on campus. So just you can go ahead and preview what the billing uh, what the bill should look like for your specific residence hall. Um, just to give you an idea. And that's going to be under the rates and fees tab on the left navigation. Awesome. Thanks, Nora. So let's see what else we have here. Um, our signs above the beds so students know if they're bed one or bed two. Does that really matter when moving in? That's a great question for you to answer. <laughs> <laughs> so um, there is not a specific bed that's assigned to you. Um, so you're able to pick whichever side of the room that you would like. Um, the one and the two are just so that you know that you are one of two people in that space. Um, and so um, there's not a specific bed in the bedroom that is assigned to you. Um, and so that is that. Um, do we know if we ship items to our personal mailing address or is there one general address um, when shipping stuff for move-in? All right, so if you go into the, your housing portal or to the Postal Service website, um, they'll be able to show you exactly what you need to ship the item. You're gonna need what, you, what they call your mail ID number, which is gonna be um, in your, where exactly can they find that? They can find where to um, send items to in their housing portal. Um, so when you're going through and looking at when you can select a time or going through and actually selecting your move-in time, there is a page in there about when and how to ship items to campus. Right, um, and as far as that mail ID number, I'm pretty sure that's gonna be in your, uh, somewhere in your account to find that mail ID number. Like I said, we're not Postal Services, so please just reference their website for more information about where to find that mail ID number. Yeah, I mean, I know I'm getting a little bit old over here, but um, <laughs> when I was here, I don't think it's changed, but my.sc.edu, you should be able to view your mail ID on that website um, and I believe it's under the addresses and phone numbers um, area of my.sc.edu. Um, so I see a question about is there a fee to use the washing machine um, and dryer? I'm glad that Meredith, thank you for answering that. But yeah, you do not need um, to pay anything or use your Carolina card. All the laundry facilities are free. Um, we even got new laundry, all new laundry um, washer and dryers last year. Um, now you're able to use an app that can track um, how much time you have left. So just keep that in mind. It is free um, and there's even an app for you for your students to be able to check their time follow up to that does it matter if they use pods <laughs> or liquid detergent or dryer so, sheets or any of that stuff um we've been told that you should use high efficiency detergent um we haven't been told that you guys can't use pods so feel free to use that as well um dryer sheets of course are permitted all right nora so specifically I, I mean we know bills are coming out soon um so do they pay their bill in full or monthly and is that included on their university bill or is housing separate um it's included on your university bill um you will need to contact the bursus's office for more information about payment plans or anything regarding how to pay um, but it is located in one bill and that's something that you would want to talk to them about as far as payment and what that looks like for you and your student 
Um, another one that I would like to bring up is about cable because we've been getting that question a lot. Um, the University of South Carolina does not offer cable for the students, um, but we do promote that you guys, you can use a streaming device. So feel free to bring your streaming device and download whatever apps to be able to watch television or to watch certain platforms. All right, Nora, um, let's see. So I'm bringing my bike to campus. Am I able to have a bike rack on the back of my car at move-in? That is a great question. During move-in, if it creates that additional space, like I mentioned earlier, if you can't fit into that parking spot, you're not gonna be able to bring it um, at that time. But you can feel free to bring it any other time after that, but it's just as far as we wanna be able to move everybody through smoothly and efficiently, and if it's just taking up extra space, oh, it's not permitted. Um, is there wireless internet? Yes, we've been getting this question a lot. There's Wi-Fi in your student's room, in the residence hall, and all across campus. Um, I've heard that, I think on the parent, parent, they said on the parent Facebook page that that has been a question that's coming up, that the residents, the rooms don't have Wi-Fi. Um, that's not true. Your student's room does have Wi-Fi. But if they do run into any problems, there's two Ethernet ports located in every single room. So if they do want to have that hardwire connection, they can just use an Ethernet port and directly plug into whatever device. A lot of students like to use that for their gaming systems we recommend it to use it for maybe your wireless print your printers um, that's supposed to be wireless but having that hardware hard, hard wire connection also works um, just to name a few all right Nora that that brings up a really good point so what about wireless printers I want to bring my own um, am I allowed to connect my printer to the wireless network yes you are but we've heard that that um, that is where the most struggle has um, come about is trying to connect to the uh, university Wi-Fi. So that's when we do recommend that you do bring an Ethernet cable and plug it right into the back of the printer so you have that, um, you always have that stable connection. Otherwise, we have heard that that has been an issue. Yeah, you can also bring a USB cable um, and connect directly to your printer whenever you need to print. That's what I did as a freshman. Yeah, great, great advice. Um, HDMI cable needed, I'm not sure uh, what you're referencing for that as far as which device might need an HDMI cable, um, Meredith. Um, and as far as how many washers and dryers, um, I, we, I don't think I know that off the top of my head. Do you? I, I don't, <laughs> um, but there is plenty because not everybody is doing laundry at the same time. Um, I never had an issue with it and I lived in a fairly large residence hall. Um, so um, we've got a question. Can we use an Amazon Alexa device? Um, I'm going to take a stab at that one and say, you are welcome to try. <laughs> However, keep in mind that you are on a Wi-Fi network that is supporting over 8,000 residential students, and that doesn't include the students that commute to campus every day. Um, and so you're welcome to try and connect that device, um, but just keep in mind, um, Wi-Fi on campus may not be exactly what you're used to at home. Um, I see a question here that asks about the three things that they have to have before move-in because they missed the beginning of the presentation. They said they knew about immunizations. Do you mind um, talking about the other two? Sorry, repeat that question one more time. I <laughs> want to make sure I get the whole thing. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. What are the things that would prevent them from moving in on move-in day? They know about immunizations. What were the other two? Um, so you want to make sure that you've got immunizations taken care of. Um, that's the number one. You want to make sure that you've got your insurance coverage mm -hmm. taken care of. Um, and that is not medical insurance, but personal and property and liability insurance. Um, and again, that can all be found on our website as well um, for those minimum requirements. Um, um, the last thing was university fees, and those do have to be paid by August 16th at 5 p.m. Um, you can the mail-in date is August 4th, but just keep in mind, especially for those that are doing sorority recruitment, if you do get to campus and you have not paid those university fees, you will not be able to get into your residence hall um, because that is the last date that you have to pay it by. Um, so just keep that in mind. All right. All right, so is it recommended for students to bring printers? I know we touched on having printers, um, but um, is it recommended or necessary, or are there other places that students can print? There are plenty of other places on campus for your student to print, and even in some of the residence halls, they do have a printing station, so just keep that in mind. It just depends on your residence hall. Um, I know somebody listed here the library, but it costs. Um, I'm not sure about the cost. Drew, do you remember you were a student here? I don't think it's as cheap as it used to be when I was a student. It's been a while, um, but you can definitely check into that, and there's multiple printers that you can print from in the library. 
Um, so yeah, we do recommend them, feel free. Um, like I said, probably just might need that hard wire connection. And one thing about printing is it really just depends on the professor as if you actually need to print things off. Um, and so keep that in mind. You may not need one when you get here um, and you may want one down the line. I would personally recommend waiting to see what you actually need until you know the expectations of your um, faculty here at USC. Uh, will there be a virtual tour of Campus Village? Um, only Sweet Style is being shown. Um, great question. Um, so two things to touch on. Uh, on our Instagram page, so unfortunately not Facebook, but um, we had our Director of Strategic Initiatives go around to the both residence hall, the Sweet Style and the Pod Style, and we did a live tour of Campus Village. That was some time ago, and things have obviously changed because they, they're, um, they're completing more day by day. But you uh, please feel free to reference um, that video on our Instagram page. It's under the Reels section or Video section, um, and you can kind of give you an idea of what the tour looks like. Um, but we also do have that 360 tour coming. Hopefully we'll have that next week. Um, but just please um, keep be on standby as we'll, we'll update the website as soon as we get those videos. All right, guys, we're gonna answer a few more questions. Is there a parking garage size limit for parent vehicles during move-in? Dodge Ram 2500 with towing <laughs> mirrors. Very specific, can it be parked during move-in? All right, so like we mentioned, if you know you have an oversized vehicle, um, just be careful, just make sure. I know those probably still typically fit into a parking garage or a parking space, but it might be tight, you guys. Um, and if you don't, I don't know if you're, that person is bringing multiple cars, so if you do want to maybe leave that, other, that car in that lot and then switch out cars or like move your stuff to the other vehicle just for space purposes. But also not everybody is going to go through a parking garage, so keep that in mind. So there, that might not be an issue at all. All right, Nora, so in the Campus Village wardrobes, really most of our wardrobes, um, is it all hanging or are there shelves? What, is, what do most of our wardrobes look like? Um, so when you open the doors to the Campus Village one, there uh, is hanging on both sides and then there's like two storage areas at the top. Um, so for the rest of them, um, they're usually about the same that I can remember. Um, do you have any other ideas of what they could look like? Yeah, I think for the most part, you're exactly correct. Um, if you're in a hall that has wardrobes instead of closets, um, you're going to have um, both options, both options, both hanging and shelf space. And there's like dressers too, like the little small, like three, three style dressers in majority of the residence halls as well. So if you don't have enough room in your closet, you do have those dressers or wardrobes. Keep that in mind when you're packing. Um, you can always bring more, but it's a lot more difficult to take stuff home once you've already gotten here. All right, guys, we're going to take a few more questions. If you have any more questions to populate. Are there are they height or width limits for vehicles at drop off? Um, so we kind of just t touched on that. It just must um, fit into a parking spot as far as height. Um, if you've already come to orientation, the Bull Street garage is probably the lowest garage that we do have on campus so that if your car could fit underneath that, then you're going to be good to go. Um, if, if you haven't come to orientation, you'll see it when you get here, which is before move in to kind of give you an idea. All right, Nora, um, how do we find out if our hall is Fast Pass or Fast Pass Plus? Um, I actually have a sheet here that I can read it off to you guys just to give you an idea, but it all, is also located on our website. And so, like I'm going to mention one more time, because I feel like people get confused with Fast Pass, it's not an actual pass. It's just the process in which you go through the line to check in. So for Fast Pass, um, that's going to be available at Bates House and Bates West, Capstone, Columbia Hall, Green Quad, and Honors. So Fast Pass means we're going to check you in in your car, and then you're going to go inside to check in your cart to check out your cart. So Fast Pass Plus, this means the cart will be located right by the drop, drop, drop off zone. You're still gonna need to check it off, I mean, check it out. But those buildings include Campus Village, all four buildings, McBride, South Tower, Patterson, and Women's Quad. 
If we did not mention any of your residence halls, then that means you're part of just the regular drop and go, meaning your student will have to go inside the residence hall to check in. Um, you, you are not allowed to check in for your student. They must go themselves. Um, you can start unloading the car at that time and then your student's gonna come back. You guys are gonna unload the car and then you're gonna go. Same thing with Fast Pass. We're gonna check you in the line. You're gonna get to your designated spot, unload your vehicle and then go find parking. I hope that, got, I hope that explains it a little bit more. All right, Nora, I think we're getting our last couple questions here. Um, I know we've got a lot of questions about potential tension rods for windows. Um, the best advice that I have for that is, again, a lot of our residence halls are different. Um, and so really, I would wait until you move in to see what size you may need. Um, and if you're even able to put a tension rod in the windowsill, um, just because you don't want to purchase anything that you may not be able not may not end up being able to use in the long run great um thank you guys we're we have we were glad to come on here today to talk with you all um we do have one more um live show coming it should be august 2nd and that is where we um, bring on campus partners um, the campus partners that we'll be bringing on are Dining Services, Gamecock Entertainment, and University Police, um, police Depart our University Police Department. Um, so just keep in mind that will be coming August 2nd. It should be the same time, 7 p.m. Um, but that'll be your last hoorah before you guys get here, at least from housing. Um, and of course, we'll be sending you guys email and correspondence um, prior to move in. But that'll be a great one to join um, when we have our campus partners. Thank you guys for joining us and we will see you guys next time.